Hi everyone, my name is Nidhanti Agastian and welcome to the lecture series on Kalman filters. This is a short lecture series containing 10 lectures in which we discuss the basic concept and derivation of the Kalman filter and its numerical implementation using MALA. Kalman filters comes under the class of Kalman estimators which are optimal linear estimators and used for estimating the states of dynamical systems. In this lecture series, we discuss the three different versions of the Kalman estimators, which are the Kalman predictor, Kalman filter, and Kalman smoother. In this first lecture, we give a brief introduction to the stage estimation problem, which is then followed by a discussion of the different types of estimators. Here is the overview. We start with the stage estimation problem and the different types of dynamical systems, which are the deterministic system and uh, uncertain systems. Then we discuss the different types of estimators. We start with the stage estimation problem, which deals with estimating the states of a dynamical system using the available information, such as the system model, sensor measurements, etc. For a dynamical system, states are the dynamical variables that captures the dynamics of the system. In other words, states captures the evolution of the system with time. Knowing the full state information of a dynamical system has many practical significance in areas such as control systems, guidance and navigation, and signal processing, etc. For example, in control systems, the state information is used for implementing the state feedback control law in which the control input is chosen as a function of the state vector. But in general, measuring all the states using sensors is impractical. This is mainly because some of the state variables will not be physical variables that can be measured directly. And for some state variables, the sensor measurements can be inaccurate and cannot be used as a reliable information. This leads to the state estimation problem in which the objective is to estimate the states of the system accurately using the available information. And in this lecture series, we will be discussing the class of state estimators called the Kalman estimators, which are optimal linear estimators. The notations used in this lecture series is mostly standard. We use the normal font to represent scalars, bold font to represent vectors and matrices, and blackboard bold font to represent sets. Now, the small letter K is used to represent the discrete time instant, which belongs to the set of non-negative integers starting from 0 up to n. n is the time horizon, which is the number of time instants up to which we estimate the state or we simulate the system. In simulations, we choose the time horizon n as finite, but in theoretical analysis, n is usually considered as infinite. Now, x k denotes the state vector, which belongs to Rn, u k denotes the control input vector, which belongs to Rm, y k denotes the output vector, which belongs to Rp. In other words, we have small n number of states, small n number of control inputs, and small p number of output variables. Similarly, dk and vk denotes the disturbance vector and noise vector, which belongs to Rn and Rp respectively. In this lecture series, we mainly focus on linear dynamical systems for which the system model parameters can be captured with the matrices A, B, and C, which we call as the system matrix, input matrix, and output matrix. The system matrix A is an n by n square matrix. The input matrix B is an n by m matrix, and the output matrix C is a p by n matrix, which are normally non-square matrices. Finally, we denote the estimated state vector using xk hat, which gives an estimate of the actual state xk. 
And another important notation for the estimated state is xk given i hat, which denotes the estimate of the state vector at a time instant k computed using the measurement information at a time instant i. In general, dynamical systems can be classified as deterministic systems and uncertain systems. In deterministic systems, the states of the system can be exactly predicted using the model of the system given the initial state and control input. In other words, for deterministic systems, the dynamics can be exactly represented using a mathematical model of the system, which will be usually a differential equation in continuous time or a difference equation in discrete time. For example, a deterministic linear time invariant system can be represented in discrete time using the state equation given in equation 1 in which the system model parameters a, b and c are exactly known. Now, uncertain systems have some uncertain parameters or variables in the system model. Therefore, the model cannot predict the states exactly. This means the model can only predict the states approximately and there will be some uncertainty in the states. As an example, you can have a stochastic linear time invariant system which is defined by equation 2 in which the disturbance vector dk and the noise vector vk are unknown and considered to be random vectors. Since dk and vk are random vectors, the model cannot exactly predict the states of the system. In order to distinguish the deterministic and stochastic systems, we can consider a simple simulation. As an example of the deterministic linear time invariant system, we consider a first order state equation as given in equation 3. And for stochastic system, the state equation is given in equation number 4. The simulation parameters are chosen as in equation number 5, in which we select the initial state x0 equal to 5. The control input is chosen as a linear state feedback, so uk equal to minus 0 0.2 times xk, which results in the equation 3 to becomes xk plus 1 equal to 0 0.3 times xk, and equation 4 becomes xk plus 1 equal to 0 0.3 times xk plus dk. Now, dk is chosen as 0 0.25 times r1, in which r1 is chosen as a Gaussian random variable with mean 0 and variance 1. The Gaussian distributions will be discussed in detail in the next lecture. Now, we can simulate the system using algorithm 1 in which we start with the initial state and perform a forward simulation of the system using a simple for loop. The for loop will run n times where n is the time horizon and in the simulation we set the time horizon as 25. In practical applications, normally the time horizon is not specified. In that case, we can use a while loop instead of the for loop and run the algorithm indefinitely. Now, using the state equation, we can obtain the next state at each time instant and this will be repeated until the end of the time horizon. Figure 1 shows the simulation response in which we simulated the system three times and plotted the response. Figure A shows the response of the deterministic system for which we get the same response during all the three times. In other words, for deterministic systems, the model predicts the states uniquely. But in stochastic system, for three simulations, we get three different plots as shown in figure B. Basically, in stochastic system, Every time when we repeat the simulation, we are expected to get a different plot. Here, for the stochastic system, we use the same initial state during all the three simulations. But normally in stochastic system, the initial state also considered as a random vector with the expected value is assumed to be known. Next, we discuss the general idea of the state estimation and the different types of estimation problems. Here, figure 2 shows the general block diagram of a control system with a state estimator. This consists of a dynamical system, 
a controller and an estimator. The estimator gives an estimate of the system state which we denoted by xk hat using the available information which are the measured output yk and the control input uk and the system model which are the abc matrices. In general, the dynamical system consists of three parts actuators, plant or process and sensors. The B matrix is usually decided by the actuators. The A matrix is usually decided by the plant or process and the C matrix is usually decided by the sensors. This distinction may not be always possible and in general, we combine these three parts and call it as the system. As we have already discussed, measuring the full state information using sensors is impractical and the dynamical variables of interest that are measured using sensors are called as the output variables, which are the elements of the output vector yk. The outputs are usually some functions of the state variables and in some cases it can be a subset of the state variables. Now the role of the estimator is to compute an estimate of the state using the input, output and system model information. The estimator is an algorithm which we can implement in a microprocessor or some analog circuits. And in this lecture series, we will discuss some of the popular estimator algorithms. Now in control systems, the estimator state information is then used by the controller to compute the control input. The controller is another algorithm which can be implemented in a microprocessor or some digital circuits. In this lecture series, we are not considering the controller part and we consider the control input as a linear state feedback. So from here onwards, we will not be considering the part within this red box and we will only focus on the estimators. Next, we discuss the different types of estimation problems. Let L denotes the time instance up to the measurement data is available and suppose the state estimate xk hat at time instant k is made using the measurements up to time instant L. In other words, we consider the sequence y0, y1 up to yl is known using which an estimate of the state is computed at time instant k which we denoted as xk hat. This means xk hat will be a function of the elements in this set. Now, based on L, the estimation problems can be classified as prediction problem in which L is less than k and filtering problem in which L equal to k and smoothing problem in which L is greater than k. For Kalman estimators also, we have these three different versions which are known by the names the Kalman predictor, the Kalman filter, and the Kalman smoother. The Kalman filter is the most popular among these three, and in this lecture series, we will discuss all the three versions and also compare their performance. Similarly, based on the nature of the system model used, estimation problems can be classified as deterministic estimation, which deals with the state estimation of deterministic systems and stochastic estimation which deals with the state estimation of stochastic systems. Now, one of the popular deterministic estimator is the Leuenberger observer, which is also known by the name the state observer or the full order observer. For the deterministic LTA system given in equation 6, the Leuenberger observer is defined as in equation number 7. Now, by defining the estimation error vector, which we denoted by xck, which is the difference between the actual state and the estimated state, we can obtain the error dynamics as in equation number 8. Here, we substitute the state equation and the observer equation, and by subtracting these two, we obtain the error dynamics as a linear autonomous state equation. For this state equation, we can obtain the solution as in equation number 9 in which we obtain xck equal to a minus lc raised to k times xc0 
where x is 0 is the initial estimation error. Now, from the linear algebra theory, if all the eigenvalues of a minus lc are less than 1, then a minus lc raised to k will converge to a zero matrix as k tends to infinity. So, we can say that if the magnitude of all the eigenvalues of a minus lc is less than 1, then even if the initial estimation error is non zero, the estimation error vector xck will converge to zero as k increases. So, the convergence of xck towards the origin will depend on the eigenvalues of a minus lc. And if the magnitude of the eigenvalues of a minus lc are smaller, the convergence will be faster. Now, in the observer design problem, we will design the observer gain matrix L to place the eigenvalues of a minus lc at a desired locations. For placing the eigenvalues of a minus lc closer to 0, the magnitude of L should be larger. Now, let us discuss the stochastic estimator. For the stochastic LTA system defined by equation 10, the error dynamics with the Lewin-Berger observer will be given by equation 12. But here we have two additional terms compared to the deterministic case. Here we can see that as the observer gain L increases, the effect of the noise vector on the state will also increase. But for faster error convergence, the observer gain should be large. So here we have two contradicting requirements. Therefore, for stochastic systems, a Lewin-Berger observer with the fixed gain L may not be sufficient. And one can go for the Kalman estimator, which is an optimal state estimator with the time bearing gain LK. So in Kalman estimators, instead of this fixed gain, we will be using a time bearing gain. So this L will be replaced by NLK. One possible choice is that during the transient period, set the L to be large so that we have faster error convergence. And during the steady state period, once the error converges to zero, select the observer gain L to be small so that the effect of noise is reduced. In the upcoming lectures, we will be discussing how to select this estimator gain LK in an optimal way. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.